In this video, I want to share with you five motivational power tools that completely transformed my life. Now, if you haven't heard my story, about 10 years ago in my early 20s, I was approaching 350 pounds. I was extremely overweight. I was depressed. I had barely any friends and I had no women at all in my life. I was living pretty much the furthest version of my ideal life possible. I decided to make a change and I decided to do whatever it took to turn my life around. Over the course of the next 10 years, I lost over 100 pounds, became a certified fitness trainer, worked day and night on my social skills, eventually went on to become a dating coach for men and coach people around the world on how to improve their social skills and how to transform their own lives. So what I wanna do here is give you five of the most important things that I used to keep myself motivated along my journey. During most of the journey, I had to be self-motivated. I didn't have too many people supporting me, especially when I first started out. Now, as things started coming along, I gained a lot of support, made a lot of friends, and had a great social network. But in the beginning, it was really tough to keep myself motivated. So I wanna share with you those five things that you could use to make your own transformation in your life. So the first of the five things that I used to motivate myself was actually pain. When I made the decision to transform my life, I was extremely depressed. I had nobody in my life. And as we know from research, the number one indicator of happiness is quality relationships. I didn't have any of them. I had a lot of time alone and by myself. And if I think back to my journey, I was often so afraid of going back to that place of being lonely and having no one in my life that I was willing to do whatever it took. One of my favorite motivational speakers, Jim Rohn, used to talk about the man who goes outside, sees his old truck, can't stand it anymore, says he's had enough, takes a shotgun to the truck, blows it to pieces and says, I'm never gonna drive around that piece of crap ever again. I remember when I lost 100 pounds in a year, the catalyst for me was I saw a picture of myself and I couldn't believe how fat and how terrible I looked in that picture. And once I saw that, I said, I never want to feel that insecure. I never want to look like that. I never want to have such low self-esteem and confidence ever again. And the pain of how I felt when I looked that way motivated me to do whatever it took to eat healthy, to work out and to push myself going forward. The second way to motivate yourself is by pleasure. And as you can see, your brain actually technically works on these two things. Your brain is wired to avoid pain and to seek pleasure. So one of the best ways to wire your brain for pleasure is to have what we call outcome focus. This is something that I learned from neuro-linguistic programming. And what it basically is, is to get a clear vision of where you want to end up. The quality of life that you wanna have, the body you wanna have, whatever it may be, have a very, very clear vision of that. And how do you do it? I just listened to a great audio from Wayne Dyer and what he said was, the most powerful tool that we have as humans is our imagination. And what he encouraged to do was to use your imagination to come up with that clear, crystal clear vision of what it is that you want in your life. Put yourself in that reality. Do it when you wake up in the morning, when you meditate. Do it before you go to bed, before you're falling asleep. Imagine the goals and the things that you want. Put them so deep in your mind and then act as if you already have those. Think about what your life would be like if you had what you want, if you had the money you want, if you had the body you want, if you had the relationship and the friends and the lifestyle that you wanted. If you can imagine it, then you can make it a reality. Everything that we have, you know, this camera I'm using, the computer, anything that you're watching this on, these were all things that were imagined first. Someone had a clear vision and then they did the work to make it a reality. So envision exactly what it is that you want. Feel the pleasure of having it and then use that pleasurable ideal vision to motivate yourself. Even when you're having a downtime, think about what the goal is. Never lose sight of it. The third motivational tool that I used was influence. And I'm going to talk about four different types of influence, okay? And what this means is your relationship to others. And there's four particular relationships that I want to touch on. And those four relationships are partners, coaches, mentees, and modeling. So the first one is partners. When I started to go out and work on my social skills, it was definitely very tough to go into some hostile environments and put myself out there and start conversations with people. So when I had my good buddy get on the same path as me and start going out together, it was much, much easier that I now had a partner to do it with me, somebody to 
have some support. That was so huge for me to have somebody on the same journey as myself. If you could link up with somebody who has the same goals as you, and then you guys can work on them together, it'll be 10 times more powerful. The second part of influence is having a coach, okay? Trying to figure things out on your own. A lot of us are very stubborn. We wanna maybe save money and we want to try to figure it out on our own and say that we did it. Well, figuring it out on your own is still looking up videos and books and all these other things that are by somebody else anyway. So if you can get direct access to somebody who's already done what you wanna do, then you could skyrocket the amount of time it takes to achieve your goal. A third way that I stayed incredibly motivated was to have a mentee. So that is somebody that I mentor and taught myself. So once I got into weight training and got pretty good with it, this was even back in high school when I first started weight training, I would have other guys that I would write workout plans for or I would teach how to lift weights. And it always motivated me to see somebody who was new on their journey and that fresh blood that had that high motivation. You know, someone usually doesn't have as much motivation as they'll ever have when they first start. So if you can take somebody on who is super motivated, they'll actually kick in and inspire you as well too. Even nowadays in the gym, if I have somebody who is really excited to work out, I love to have them as a workout partner. It doesn't matter if they're not lifting as much weight as me or whatever it may be, but bringing them on and seeing their enthusiasm for it becomes contagious for me as well too. And the fourth part of influence is modeling. This is also another NLP concept. If you could have that ideal vision like I talked about before, but actually have a picture of somebody else that inspires you, then that is a great thing to motivate yourself, okay? I tell people who wanna get in shape to pick somebody who is of similar height, maybe a former similar build of them as well, and now that they have an ideal physique that they'd like to obtain, have some pictures of that person. You know, follow them on Instagram or follow them online and keep track of what they do and use them to inspire yourself. Not necessarily a comparison, but an inspiration so you could do what they've done as well too because what one man can do, so can another. The fourth motivation tool is to take action before your motivation, okay? This is something that I learned in a book I was reading recently called How to Be an Imperfectionist. And once I saw this, I was like, man, this was what I was doing on my whole journey. This was the quintessential element that made me successful. And what it was, was like, just like it states, taking action before you're motivated, okay? I asked my father recently, and my father's in his 50s, and he still works out constantly. He's been working out since he was 15 years old. And I said, Dad, how often do you go to the gym when you don't feel like it? What percentage of the time do you not feel like going to the gym, but you still go anyway? And he said over 90% of the time, he doesn't feel like it. He'd rather just stay doing whatever he was doing but he still formed the habit and still goes to the gym despite how he feels. If you can form that habit of taking the consistent action, I mean, that's really the definition of discipline in my opinion, right? What is discipline? Discipline is doing the things that you know you should do to achieve your desired goal even when you don't feel like it. So if you start small, always start a very, very small goal. You know, there's books out there a great book called Mini Habits. There's a book called The One Thing. And what they say is to start small, set a small task for yourself to do so that you could start to gain momentum towards your goals. And once you start to make habits and start to take the actions, and then you start to see some results, then that'll supercharge your motivation. And the fifth motivation power tool is to recreate yourself. The best way to do this is to pick an event. I remember when I was younger, I would see the families on the holidays and I liked the feeling of seeing the families and them saying, oh wow, you look bigger, you look like you put some muscle on or you look like you lost some weight. It may be a wedding, right? How many people get in fantastic shape when they have a wedding? It could be a breakup. How many people uh, go on the breakup diet and lose a ton of weight and recreate themselves after? You know, it could be a fitness show. A lot of people do fitness shows to get into shape. It could be some type of reunion. It could be it could be New Year's. It could be a work conference. It could be moving on from a terrible event you had in the past. Whatever it may be, use these events and use a timeline to now pick a goal and a date ahead of time where you're going to achieve a goal by. Some people have daily goals, weekly goals, quarterly check-ins, New Year's goals, like I said, whatever it may be, use time and events to set a goal for yourself to achieve something by. Now those five motivational tools can absolutely transform your life. They transform my life. But I wanna add two motivational tools 
that will actually be bad for you and that I don't think you should use. And the first of those is comparison, okay? Comparing yourself to other people is a trap. So you see somebody, oh, he has this, he has that. And what you do, comparing yourself against it, if it's too far away, very often what we'll do is we'll think, what's wrong with me? What did I do wrong? And we'll start to actually put ourselves down and put somebody else on a pedestal. You know, motivation like jealousy or feeling bad about yourself are two terrible ways of motivation. What I like to tell people is when you have that need to compare yourself, change it to inspiration. So change comparison over to inspiration. And what that will do is say, hey, look, like I mentioned before, what one man can do, so can another. So if somebody else made it happen, then you can make it happen as well. And a quick thing to add in there is for every excuse that you have, there's always somebody out there with your excuse that made it happen anyway. And the second form of motivation that I want you to stay away from is to prove people wrong. You know, you hear people say, I want to prove the haters wrong. I want to approve the naysayers wrong. And it's a negative type of motivation that I don't believe really gives you energy. Okay. If you send love and peace and acceptance out to other people, you have a lot more free mental space to now work on your goals. When you harbor a lot of resentment and bad feelings towards other people, it can really weigh you down. So I definitely don't encourage you to hang on to any of that. And a funny story about my journey is I remember when I was learning, some people would say things to me like, you know, why are you reading these books? And why are you going out and trying this stuff? And, and this is stupid. This stuff doesn't work. And what has it done for you so far? You put so much energy into it. And at that point, it hadn't done anything for me. But, you know, a few years later when I came back and now I was making a full-time living off of teaching social skills. Now, when I was dating beautiful women, now when I had a really great life and I was traveling around and these people would hear about it, the best they would say was, yeah, good for you. Proving them wrong didn't really give me any satisfaction in the long run. And you know what? It doesn't matter because no matter what you're going to do, you're going to get some criticism along the way. But I want to encourage you to take action and whatever you want in your life, that ideal vision that you have or those things that you want to feel or experience in your life, don't let anyone tell you that you can't have them. Use these five motivational tools that I gave you and go after the life that you want. I encourage you to take charge, stay motivated, and make your dreams a reality. If you have any other tools that you use to keep yourself motivated, please feel free to comment below and share the wealth with us. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll have new videos to you every week.